Hello everyone and welcome to another brand new series on the channel. This is shows this what this series is all about me taking a look at Dyson Sphere program because well it's a it's a sort of a Factorio-esque game and so I thought it'd be interesting to try something else in the, in in the, in the genre. So my my first sort of impressions of it are that yeah it you can you can play it in almost the same way as Factorio as you can see here I've got a sort of a main bus being set up with all the with lots and lots of different um, resources on it so for example I've got I think these ones are iron, these are iron gears, we've got uh, coils over here, we've got green circuits, and so on. So there's a lot, of, a lot of similarities to the way it's played. I've got a big stompy robot instead of the normal, instead of the, the Factorio engineer, but that's again fairly similar. This guy did look a lot like Bumblebee when I first started, the, uh, from Transformers. However, I've now recolored him into my sort of my um, normal uh, game, game colours. Although, a slightly more muted version of them because it looks a bit ridiculous when absolutely the entire when the entire robot was a full 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 on blue color. So th this sort of color here, in fact. So yes, it's um it's similar enough that I had a, had a, have a reasonable feel for what I'm doing. But I'm also aware there's going to be quite a lot more stuff in the future. I'd say my biggest challenge with it so far has been has been the control system. So it's obviously it's different to Factorio because it's 3D and because it's a different game. But other, in general, it's not been I've not had serious issues, but it's but it has just felt a little bit different. So let's let's rather rather than comparing everything to Factorio because that might be a little bit unfair. Let's have a bit of a talk about what I've done so far. So I started off with an iron mine because that's what you always need for basically everything. Um, and the iron mine, the iron mine here, the mine is in, in this game. This, you put down a mining machine, and it's got this this cone-shaped or this triangle-shaped um, arc of area it can mine. So there's these various iron veins in the ground, and it's picking. I've got this one mining apparently three of them. There's another three over here, so I could potentially put another one of these machines down over at the other opposite it if I wanted to, and try and, and try and mine these ones up as well. Except I think there's some belts in the way, so I probably can't do that. What I'll probably do is carry on with this patch until we've used up all of these veins, and then move them, move the drill forward a little bit, and start working on the other ones instead. So this was enough to get me started. Um, I, I was then able to start making these these magnets. With, so we've got, we've also got, <clears throat> we've also got assembly. Well, we've got arc smelters, and these turn, these turn, these turn ore into um, in, into plates, or in, or actually into magnets as well. So they're effectively turning ore into useful things. They're basically like a bit like the smelters. I know I said I wasn't going to compare everything to Factorio, but I I, I, can't, I can't help it. I'm sorry. I've just I spent 2,000 hours playing Factorio and two playing Dyson Sphere program. So, what can you do? But then you've got these things here, which are essentially inserters. They will grab off the items off the belt as, the, as they go past and put them into the assembly machine as they're required. And then you can do them, have them coming out as well. So you've got the little lines on them to show, show you where everything's going. So that's that's quite nice. And so I've got this belt of um, of, of cogs going along here. And you can then, yeah, you then sort of expand out in a sort of a very, in a standard way for this sort of game. So over here we've got, um, we're making belts here in enormous quantities. They can go into a into a storage container there, but those are made out of uh, cogs and more iron. So I've I've done a splitting. The, the, I started off splitting the belts like this. So this is another. Basically, this is having two belts running parallel to each other, with an inserter passing from one to the other. So. It's a bit slow, but it does work, and, and to be honest, this was fast enough for the machine at the other end, because again, I've got one inserter feeding the iron into that, so it's bound to be enough. And then on the back, I've got an inserter passing it out again. What's quite interesting about these things is the inserters are flexible as to how far they go, so you can have them go from something into the adjacent thing, if you want, like that, so straight off this belt into the machine it's touching. Or in this case, this is probably about as long as they go, where it crosses... Um, one, two. It's kind of hard to tell. Let's 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 grab something. There we go. There's the grid. So this crosses two empty points as well on 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 the grid um, before it goes into the machine. And what's quite interesting is the um, the grid in this one is it, everything goes from the centre of the grid to halfway across it. Right. So rather than rather than an item filling a square like it does in in Factorio and many many other games, everything appears on one of the intersections. At least when you start when you when you start off by default for snapping purposes. And I think this might be to do with the um, the 3D-ness of the game. Because if I switch over to the map view, and hmm, there's a way to turn on the um, the view of the was it this? Is it like this? Nope. There is a way, and I don't know what it is, unfortunately, to to to, to get to get the map view to get it onto map view, but show the grid lines. And it turns out that as you get closer to the poles, you get some funny funny effects happening so in an attempt to keep a sort of a more or less square grid on a spherical planet 
they have at the as, as you get as you move closer to the poles they have points of disconnect where you get a line that has more vertical a horizontal line that has more vertical lines on one side than the other and those happen more and more frequently as you get closer to the poles so it, it allows it to keep a sort of a reasonably good square grid but without having too much of a um, but without having well it allows it to keep the square grid without it getting hor and, 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 and deal with the distortion that way so I'm using currently using lots and lots of wind turbines to generate the power. They're they're working fine. This the, I've got a lot of them, and so between them they are producing enough power to keep my factory going. I'm going to click on here. It shows me the power satisfaction. And I'm pretty sure I managed to get a graph up of it earlier, but at the moment you can see that we're we're using about a bit less than 50% of the power that's being generated. Um, oh, it was was it on? Here we go, stats panel. So I can look up um, power, for example, and it shows here's my um, generating capacity. I don't know why it's going up and down very slightly. I'm, oh yes, because I put a solar panel in. There's one solar panel somewhere in the base, so that's why it's, it's going. Power generation capacity is going up a little bit and then down a little bit. And then down here we've got the amount of power I'm using. So if I, look, I can look back over the last hour, and you can see that sometimes it spikes up, sometimes it spikes down. Depends on what's going on at the, at the time. So yeah, this is it's it's. Nice, yeah, it's nice and playable. It, it works well. We've got power being generated here. Then these things, they call them um, Tesla towers. They're basically they're equivalent to pylons, except they can do um, wireless energy transmission. So you can see this one is is joined to the the uh, wind turbines by little lightning beams. And then over here, all of these machines are probably yes, they're they're all joined to the nearest um, tower by again more lightning beams to keep everything powered and running. So yeah. Um, oh no, no, take it back. Take the back, sorry. No, the, um, the 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 towers are joined by the little lightning beams. The um, the machines are just well. You can see you can see the the, uh, the location of the um, of the uh, of the 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 area, the coverage area of that particular power pole. Now, one of the things that's taken a little bit of getting used to is that the Tesla towers, the power poles, have a circular area of effect rather than a, a, rec a square one or a rectangular one like the uh, the ones in Factorio. And it makes a lot more sense because there's a distance they can push the power out from them. But it makes it a bit harder to set up a grid, which is. I, I mean, to be honest, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it just just is. <clears throat> so we, yeah, I continued along here. Then I thought, okay, I, I'm going to need some more resources. So we need our, we need copper. And there wasn't there was I, I was going to say there wasn't a copper area, uh, area particularly close by. But if I fly over here, and yes, my robot can fly, which is nice. It's a research I've done. There is a copper supply over here, which I could have tapped into, um, but I didn't. Um, where's the charging point? <laughs> but I didn't. I instead let, let, let's use the map view. Right, instead I went all the way over to here. Ooh, controlling the camera is a bit tricky sometimes. Right, all the way over to here, this one over here. And then I've, I've basically, I've done on-site smelting. So the, the copper ore comes out of there, goes into the smelting um, arc smelter here, and then comes out as copper plates, which go all the way down this long belt, because I haven't got trains yet or anything similar to it. And then they go in here where we can start doing things like making them into the copper, in, into the uh, coils. Or into the uh, the green circuits. And yes, yeah, so that's so that's working nicely. And then, and then I thought, right, okay, let's let's play it like Factorio, basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work work along here. I'm going to make all of the things I seem to be needing in large quantities. So we've got cogs going onto the bus. We've got coils going onto the bus. We've got green circuits going onto the bus. And then I've, I've started making things. So here we're making the power poles. Here we're making the assembly machines. Then we needed these things, these these tesseracts, in order to do do research and, and and a few other things as well. So I've made 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 a matrix lab, which is making growing me my tesseracts, and then another one next to it to do the actual research. So early on in the game, you can you can go and you can look in your that's not that's not the right place. You can go in and look in research. Here it is. Um, and there's lots and lots of things to research. You start off with getting learning about the game. You, you can do electromagnetism that gets you mining drills and stuff like that um, but each each research will consume a certain number of resources so in this case to do this one unlock required 10 of the coils this one requires 10 coils and 10 green circuits this one requires the same this one requires 100 tesseracts so there's lots and lots of different researches that all require different things and but most of them require a tesseract and then as you get a bit more f a bit further on into the game you start to find they require red tesseracts or sometimes both 
he says, looking for one. There it goes. Sometimes both green, uh, blue and, and red tesseracts. And there are various upgrades you can research as well. And these these tend to require things that are slightly more linked to the upgrade. So in order to um, give my mecha a bigger internal battery, it took 20 iron plates and 20 copper plates. In order to boost that up a bit further, it's going to be some tesseracts. To make it move faster, um, I require uh, electric motors, which makes a certain amount of sense. To explore the universe's tesseracts, sure, communication tesseract. So that there's lots and lots of different researches you can do that require all kinds of different things. So this one, flight engine, requires coal for some reason. So yeah, there's lots, lots and lots of different researches. And you can either do these sort of in your... You can do them manually if you want by um, having the things in your inventory and then and, and telling it to do the research and your mech will just automatically churn through it because it's got a sort of... It's got a, a built-in research facility of, of, of sorts that can do research but slowly <clears throat> and it's also got a built-in replicator which is basically pocket crafting for um, for Dyson Sphere program so I can make any of these things I could make I could make some prisms for example because I've got some I've got some glass in my inventory um, and, I'll, and, then, and then the mech will just will build them in, 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 in its built-in replicator and that's why I've got quite a lot of random miscellaneous stuff in my uh, in my inventory it's just sort of all accumulated there over time your mech does use power, though. As you can see at the bottom here, we've got the uh, the mech's core energy, which is we're actually is gradually charging at the moment. If I go into my... In somewhere, I can get the information about that. Um, here we go, mecha panel. Right, so I can, if I want, put anything flammable into my mecha's fuel chamber, and it will start to burn it. And as you can see, we're now charging the internal battery up a little bit more quickly, but we're burning all of this plant fuel. I said plant fuel. It's um, it's it's bits and pieces of plant that I've ripped up from the ground. And the same with the trees. The trees you, you the trees you can you can harvest as well from the from the landscape, and then they turn into wood, and you can burn them to uh, and, and to, to power the mecha. You can also put, you can also power uh, you can also burn coal instead if you prefer. Let's, let's get it to do that. There we go. And you'll notice the coal burns a bit more slowly because it's a bit it's, it's a more efficient way of um. Uh, it's, it's a more efficient per per unit of stuff way of charging up your mecha, but it's, it's producing power at the same rate no matter which way you do it. Now, as you saw, our research just just finished, so I've, I've, I've completed another one, and and now it talks to me, tell me about it. Now that's actually quite good timing because I was about to talk about that. So one of the things you can do in Dyson Sphere program, which is quite nice, I've down here I've got my um, matrix labs that are doing the. Um, go away that are doing the uh, making the tesseracts and then doing the research and this one's glowing like this because this is a this is a research that requires both blue and red uh, cubes in order to do it but in order to make in order to sort of keep maximum space efficiency if I zoom out a bit you'll see that we've actually got these stacked into well into stacks of three and this allows you so you can build one and then you can put another one on top of it and another one on top of it I believe they all have to use do this be doing the same recipe but it means that along here where I want to make these blue cubes a bit faster and I've already put in all of the infrastructure to, to load the required stuff into the into the tower I can just build more and more up up and up on it now three was the limit before, but I've just completed another research, so presumably that means if I had another one of these uh, matrix labs, I could put that on top of here, and we'd have even, and we then we'd be up to four of the machines doing doing the recipe instead of three. That has meant I've needed to do some upgrading. So you'll notice that this inserter is is orange, whereas these ones are green. So this is a tier one, and these are tier twos, and these move a bit faster. And you can see, you can see as they as they insert something into the swing the camera around this way. Woo camera difficulties as they put something in you can see this grabby thing moving across and back again and that means the first so that because of that the further you've got an inserter passing things the slower it goes so long long inserters are essentially slower than short inserters because they have to do more work speaking of inserters you'll notice they're all going into these sort of little door things on the side of the um, on the side of the building so that's how you feed stuff in most a lot of buildings will have three door sections on either side like this and those are places where you can you can you can put in an input the the um, assembly machines are the same sort of thing so here we've got a belt coming around and going in here um, there are a few exceptions to this sort of thing so for example the mining drills are a bit like they're a bit like the factorio ones <coughs> in that they just have they just pass the stuff straight out of the back like okay this is a splitter they just pass pass the stuff you're mining straight out of the back of them like this so uh, you can just hook a belt directly up to them but then all of the machines that run off it you need to use the inserters now also because this is a 3d game rather than underground belts you, you're allowed to build things upwards like this so I've got this belt that's going up here and then going over this one and then well going up here over this one and then going down over here somewhere in order to feed into into there into the splitter over there um, over here I've got 
more of that sort of 3D shenaniganery going on. So, yep, that's working quite nicely. And then I discovered these, there's these splitters, and these can be put in, in various different configurations. So, over here, in fact, let's see if I've got any in my inventory. I have. These can be put in, in various different configurations. You can have them like this one, where they're horizontal and they've got an input output on either each of the four sides. And as you can see over here, I'm using two of the sides as input. On this particular one, I'm using two of the sides as inputs and one as an output, so that's fine. Or you can, um, is it tab I think, yes there we go, you can have this one which is particularly, this is the one I've been using most of, where it's um, it's vertical, so you've got two inputs and two outputs, you've got four, four input outputs again, but they're um, they're on the ends and they're one above the other, so that that's perfect for going over here where we've got these bus systems, because these are a bit narrower, so they fit in quite nicely along the, along the belts here without needing to put in anything on either side of them, which is absolutely great, because then you can have you can have the uh, the belt, the bus, main bus carry on along at ground level, and then at one level up, you can have another belt coming out, which feeds the feeds the uh, stuff over any other nearby belts. So it's this means you can actually put these things as close as you like. I don't need to do this sort of shenaniganery like this with the inserters um, in order to get the in order to, uh, and, and leave a, a gap in order to get stuff off them. I don't know whether I didn't have these earlier on or whether I did have them and I just hadn't noticed the possibilities. Um, but since I, you, you can see where I learnt about them and then just started using them from there on everywhere. But that does mean if I want I can now start to fill in these gaps I'd left in the bus with additional resources if I want to stop it getting too big and expansive. I think they have a th another way you can um, arrange them. So there's that one, there's the um, all four sides which is a default, then there's the linear which is the very which is the useful one. Then there's this one. Oh, okay, this one where they, yeah, this one would would have been perfect for the bus, except it's still wide having it like this. So you can't put it up against another another belt, but it does mean they go straight out the sides. But to be honest, having them come out and then curve is good enough. Even if, although we do seem to have a bit of clipping there, it would look nicer if they had to come out a little bit further before they curved. But that doesn't seem like a me problem. <laughs> uh, is that the last? Yes, that's the that's the only other one. So there's flat, linear, and cross, vertical cross, whatever you want to call that one. Um, yeah, so that allows you to get stuff up and over and, and, and so on. I haven't needed to go another level above this yet, but I'm sure it's fairly sure it's only a matter of time. Because, well, I started to discover I was running a bit low on iron, so I've got another iron mine here. And that one's feeding out back along this way. It's feeding out into the... Um, oh, to make steel here as well. And also back over there to make all of the iron products. And I think this is going to potentially be Problem is too strong a word, but I'm fairly sure that these belts are going to have to go up quite a long way in order to get over this miner. So that might be my first experimentation with belts going up to level 3, maybe even level 4. We shall see. <coughs> so, what else have we been doing? Well, yes, there's been a few a few other things I've made. Um, we've got the... Uh, I've automated the, the wind turbines, which is very useful, and the inserters. I don't know why I didn't do those sooner, but I have done here. Motors here, these are probably, yes, these are going out onto the bus because those are think, another sort of intermediate product that I'm fairly sure I'm going to need in large quantities. And I've then started making um, these prisms and making these plasma doohickeys. Yes, plasma doohickeys, we'll call them that for now. Um, those are required in order to make these matrix labs, I believe. Um, and, pos and I think to make these plasma, the wireless power towers. And these are great. Look, it's charging up my mech's internal battery as well, which is rather nice because otherwise you have to burn enormous amounts of fuel to keep it charged. Um, but yeah, these are, these are again, more, more ingredients that go into future production things. So we'll, we'll see about putting them on the bus as I discover whether they're needed or not. Then over here we are making, and this, and this again, we're making the, uh, now we're making the red tesseracts. And those are, those are required for research again, as I said. So we're feeding them out onto a belt that goes down all the way down here and gets fed into the, um, into the research tower over here. Whereas you can see, oh, we've just finished another one. we just finished the high efficiency logistics system. That's nice to know. So that's tier three. Uh, tier two belts? Yeah, tier, no, tier three. Oh, tier two belts, tier three um, inserters and bigger storage units. Well, that's nice. I think that's all, that seems to be all the research I had queued up because the thing hasn't appeared in the corner of the screen to tell me about it. So this seems to be limited by the input of whatever this is. So what, what have we got over here? This is okay. So over here, right? We're making um, whatever these things are. Uh, making uh, what are we making in this arc smelter? We are making um, graphite. Okay, so we need we need more of these arc smelters to make make the graphite a bit quicker. That's a, a thing to do in the future. I also discovered that I, I've um, I needed to start oil processing. So over here, I've got an oil drill, which is pretty much standard as you'd expect, and that's feeding 
So everything in this game seems to be a solid. So oil is coming out here. It's coming out in little these boxes of oil, which are very, very shiny. They're being brought over here, fed into these three refinery buildings. And then the refineries are producing, if I remember correctly, it's, what is it? It's, it's refined oil and hydrogen, both of which come out in boxes. So we've got the orange boxes of refined uh, oil going out that way. And then these boxes of hydrogen coming out this way. Um, the, the refined oil I am feeding into this uh, storage tank because I don't have any actual uses for the refined oil at the moment. So I'm just sort of, well, not very many uses. I can burn it in the, to power the mech, but I think that's about it so far. So I'm just stockpiling it at the moment in order to keep the hydrogen flowing. Now, as I know very well from Factorio, this tends to be a, a um, this tends to eventually be a problem. But there's quite a lot of room left in this tank, as we can see, it's less than half full. So we'll we'll see how this goes. The hydrogen again then comes down the uh, down the belts over here and is fed off for whatever's using it. What's using the hydrogen? Oh, that's another ingredient for the red tesseract. So the uh, the hydrogen is being passed along here and being fed in over there, as you exactly as you'd expect. I've done similar things with stone as well, but you. That's, that works in very much the same way that the iron does, so there's not a great deal I need to say about that. The steel I haven't started to need yet, by the looks of it. I've just ma I've made it because it seemed like a good idea, but it's just sitting here waiting to be put onto the bus at the moment. So we'll uh, we'll wait and see when that's required. Maybe I think I might have required that for some manual crafting of things. We'll, uh, uh, I, I, I don't remember. There's a load more coal over here as well, so maybe it might be worth starting to try and use some of that for generating power. I am vaguely rather aware that I'm running out of space on for my main bus at the moment so granted I can probably make the uh, the bus go up and go across this puddle and then could land again over here and maybe work maybe then pull over this way and start using this area to build more, anything beyond uh, in, in the future but I suppose actually I've not used up that much space yet so that's basically as far as I've got with Dyson Sphere program so far. I'm, I'll be streaming again on uh, on Wednesday if you want to come along and watch. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing in the future though. There's, there's, as we've seen, there's lots and lots of research that needs to be done. So I'll be working, I'll be chipping away at these, trying to get, well, trying to get my research done if nothing else, and just sort of gradually progressing through the game. Um, then. At some point, I, sh I know I shall be heading off to other planets, probably trying to discover new materials. It's all very, uh, all very space exploration, or perhaps I should say, space exploration is all very Dyson Sphere program. But yes, there's lots, lots going on, lots to see and lots to do. I'm going to find out what that is. So thank you for watching, and I hope to see you on Wednesday for the stream and next Sunday for the next catch-up video. I'll see you then.